This is called Keno Escalation. Now, all this so far, we've been zooming into the attract stage. Now we're going to zoom into the comfort stage. How long is the attract stage? It's roughly 30 minutes. Gives you enough, enough time to get a phone number so you can see her again and start building comfort. Let's zoom in now to the comfort building stage. There's something called Keno Escalation. There are a series of steps that must take place in order to have sex with a woman. You have to get her comfortable with your, um, you know, with, the, with your uh, proximity. You have to be close to her. Make her comfortable with that. Hand-holding, she has to be comfortable. So what are the steps? Now these aren't in any particular exact order, but they definitely have to be reached at some point. Hand-holding, we need to hold her hands. How about elbow and elbow? You know, arm and arm. What else do we have? We have uh, holding. I mean, you're not going to start a sexual relationship if a woman does not want to be held by you. How about um, long-term hand-holding, you know, as you're walking? That already feels really good. But there's more. What about kissing? Kissing is not seduction. Kissing's comfort building. Foreplay, that's leading to arousal, which is in seduction. But see where we're leading. When do I begin the hand holding? About three minutes in. I'm already doing keno tests. All right? Elbow and elbow. Come on, let's join our friends. I'll do the elbow and elbow thing, thereby, you know doing pre-selection for other girls as well, but building comfort, arm in arm, has to happen before kissing, right? For kissing, then of course we've got, um, we've got some deeper stuff, you know, you're now kissing the girl, there's Frenching, French kissing. Generally speaking, before you can French kiss a girl, you have to kiss her normally. One little um, piece of body language advice for you on kissing, and a girl taught me this, you know, I was kind of naive. Uh, I'm not going to demonstrate it with anyone here. I, uh, I was kissing her and she said, uh, no, you're doing it all wrong. What? Doing it all wrong? She said, yeah, you, your tongue is so stiff and hard when you're ah, uh, ah, uh, ah uh, in my mouth. I'm like, well, how am I supposed to do it? And she goes, soft. Make your, your tongue loose and soft and pliable and ah, uh, mm, do it like this. And so we kissed each other that way and I was like, that's a good point. That's a lot better. That's, that's much more comfortable for me than, uh, I felt invaded that way when she did it to me. It was gross, in fact. And I'm like, wow, I was doing that to women? Yeek. You know, the first time you're kissing a girl, wait 30 seconds before you introduce the tongue. Don't go in. Some girls will do it themselves. They'll, you know, you're in a public gathering and she likes you. Now, you know, a woman who um, has a high uh, S and R value, in other words, a woman who is a 10, she said no so many times that when a man finally has come along that has demonstrated a high SNR value for her, she'll say yes like that. So in fact, in many ways, it's easier to get a 10 than a 7. Just focus on getting a 10 rather than a 7. Get the skill set for that, and you'll be richly rewarded. Why go for someone with low SNR value when you can go for someone with high SNR value? Because legitimately, they're going to improve your chances of survival and replication. It's hardwired into the attraction mechanism of your brain for a purpose. That makes sense, doesn't it? Not logical. All right. French kissing. What about, um, now we're off into seduction, of course. It starts in the attraction stage as keno tests, leads off into this, uh, you know, keno escalation all the way up to seduction tactics. It's about six hours, and then seduction, of course, is about 30 more minutes. So seven hours on average, give or take. Now, how long? Should it be exactly? It's not based on, on an, a time limit, seven hours. It's based on the natural escalation of Kino that she has comfort, uh, comfort with. You do one thing at a time, one thing at a time, one thing at a time. All right? Uh, after French kissing, you can have, uh, um, well, there's neck biting. All these things have to take place. You have to get her comfortable. Neck biting. Truth is, Again, this isn't in any one particular order because I've done neck biting. Oh, hell, I did neck biting yesterday in the club. Um, how about hair pulling is another one. 
It's a great little piece. You can grab the back of her hair. You could do it in a club. I mean, a girl's sitting here. I'm sitting here. Um, we're, it's, we're eight minutes in to the, to the uh, um, courtship. And I could say, you can thank your ancestors for this feeling. Put your head forward. Good. Feel this. Grab the back of her hair and pull and go, oh, uh-uh. isn't that awesome? Do that to me. Oh, yeah. Now, if you're bald, you can say, that's one of the things I really miss. <laughs> but you can still do it to her. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? Unless she's bald. In which case, you're, you're shit out of luck. So now, now that we know some of the Kino escalation um, steps that we have to bring a woman to, look, the, the next woman you're going to have a sexual relationship with, you need to go through these steps with her. And she has to be comfortable at each step. Here's a problem. How can you get, if she's uncomfortable with hand-holding, how can you get to elbow-holding? How can you get to holding her? If she's uncomfortable with being held, how can you get to kissing? So I came up with a solution. There's uh, something called punishment reward. It's a beautiful little way about it. It's uh, very, um, it's very reasonable. Quite simply, I'm going to make a move on her while I'm talking about something non-sexual. I'll maybe put my hand on her on her um, leg for a little bit. You know, go. Oh my God, you are such a little shit. I can't believe you. I hate you. No, you know what I love about you? The fact that uh, you don't take my crap. That's what I absolutely love about you. Now you can arm in arm. If she, let's say, for instance, you're in arm in arm as you're talking. And you're, talking about, you're not talking about the arm in arm. Okay? This is subtext. We don't talk about our keno escalation. We have comfort building material. You'll be talking about your life. Uh, you know, oh, when I was a little kid, I wanted to grow up and be a magician. And I'm already doing keno escalation while I'm speaking about something else. All right? So two things are happening at once in the comfort stage. One, you are building, you know, you're, you're um, sequencing a bunch of comfort building material while simultaneously doing a, a slow process of keno escalation. If you don't do keno escalation in comfort, the next thing you know, you haven't even held her hand, you haven't even done elbow and elbow, no kissing, nothing. When you get her to your house and she's comfortable being in your house, all of a sudden you're going to make the move and she's going to feel uncomfortable because she was expecting that you were just going to be a friend. That's called let's just be friends. You have to begin keno escalation. You can't be a wussy. You have to begin keno escalation right three minutes in and slowly make it go, step by step. Here's how you do it. Now I'm arm in arm, and she feels comfortable with that. Good. I can then do my next step, lean in and go, smell her and go, mm, you smell so good. God damn it. If she feels uncomfortable with that, that's fine. I can then take her hand off my elbow, or you know, if she's, her hand's here, I can take it off me, lean back, and talk normal again. Meanwhile, she felt comfortable with the elbow and elbow, but now I took that away because she was uncomfortable with the second step. In other words, I do the first step, she's okay, good. Second step, she's uncomfortable, not only do I go back down to hand-holding, I go, I go to zero again. So it's not one step forward, um, oh, sorry, um, two steps forward, one step back, one, uh, two steps forward, one step back. It isn't that way. I go one step forward, I make a move, she's uncomfortable, fine, take it away, two steps back and I wait until she reciprocates and makes a move on me. And then I do one step forward, makes her a little uncomfortable, it has to, and two steps back. She feels more uncomfortable not getting the keno escalation than accepting it. She starts chasing me. No word of a lie, this happens. About three minutes in, the keno escalation, where she starts chasing me up the stairs, occurs. Um, you know, I've, I made out with a girl yesterday, you know, just for demonstration purposes for some friends of mine. And um, there's a natural keno escalation that takes place. It's normal. So again, just so that you really understand this concept of one step forward, two steps back. Let's say, for instance, I'm holding her. Remember that, that um, uh, example of saying that we were listening to a song? What song are we listening to? Afterwards, I say, all right, get off me, and I push her away. That demonstration of pushing her away is what makes her feel insecure. And she was, you know, yeah, she felt a little uncomfortable, you know, with maybe too much attention from me, because I'm pushing it, you know, at each step, you're pushing your boundaries a little bit. And yet she feels so, uh, you know, uncomfortable not getting that attention. Now that I pushed her away, I did negative body language for a moment. Now, I'm gonna have to do this little game of tug and war right, tug of war rather, 
How many times? Well, I've discovered that there's around somewhere between eight and 12 of these, okay? And you'll have to do them each step of the way over a period of a good six hours, and that may be accumulating over the course of a week. You know, two hours here, you get her phone number, you see her another time, two hours here, three hours there. It all starts adding up. Fair enough? Does that make sense to you? All of you, every single one of you, has a mission of survival and replication. And every single one of you is going to have a beautiful woman in your life. And every single one of you, in order to have that beautiful woman in your life, is going to have to keno escalate. It starts three minutes in and it ends when sex begins. All right? Now let's move on into sex. Anyone want to demonstrate? No, I'm teasing. No, I'm not some sex expert. I mean, sex is fun. But uh, I'm going to give you just a couple little, you know, non-verbal communication pieces for you for when you get there, okay? I'm sure many of you have already been there, so this will ring true. When you are, uh, when you want to give her an indicator of interest and make a move on her, if she feels uncomfortable, you'll take it away. Well, if she feels too uncomfortable, she'll take it away before you can take it away, and the keno escalation doesn't work. So, for instance, let's say you've gone into uh, arousal. Now, this is the first stage, or first phase, rather, of the last stage of seduction. If you put your hand on her breast, she may take her, your hand away because she feels uncomfortable. But she can't take it away if you just rub over like this. But it's still communicated exactly, it communicated exactly what you wanted to communicate, right? So don't grab it. Just slide nicely over it. That conveys exactly what you, you want to convey. All right. There are five last-minute resistance tactics. You know how we have this overwhelming desire to um, approach a woman when we see a beautiful woman at a distance? Not approach her necessarily, but we wish we could be with her. And then as we think about approaching her, we have this overwhelming desire to not approach. That's hardwired into your head. You think, wow, I must, be, I must be crazy. I'm so crazy. I've got this weird desire to go for it and then not. Where did this, this come from? Well, you see, your uh, emotional circuitry is twofold. It's not just replication. It's also survival. Your emotional circuitry is designed not for today's environment, because today's environment never existed before today. We live in the midst of a population explosion. There's 6.45 billion people here. Man, you know, back in um, the 1750s when Casanova was, that was his heyday, there were only 750 million people on the planet. I mean, think about it. Look at the difference between living in a small town of 100 people all your life and living in a huge city. Big difference, right? Well, our emotional circuitry is designed for us to live in a small tribal community of about 100 people, right? So, yes, you have an overwhelming desire to approach the hottest girl, the girl that's going to give you the most chance of survival and replication. She has a high serve, uh, high serve or high SNR value. But be careful. What if she's taken? That guy may have friends, and five rocks then go on your head, and you are buried in the desert. This is Vegas. <laughs> At least 40,000 years ago, this is what could have happened. Now, a days, there's more women than... So you don't have to worry so much about this. But our emotional circuitry doesn't know that. It's designed for the ancient environment 40,000 years ago, not for today's environment. Evolution is slow to change. We adapt to the environment. The environment changes first, then we adapt to it. Now, that's one reason why we fear the approach. And guess what? Hey, mystery, ooh, world's greatest. I fear the approach. Style. you will be reading his book, The Game. Uh, uh, you know, I'm one of the central characters in this. This is how, how he and I met. He's one of my best buddies. He fears the approach, and he's awesome with women. You figure, well, how's he, how can these guys fear the approach? They've done it so many times. I'll tell you how. It's hardwired into us. That's how. You know? So is hunger. So is the drive for sex. It's healthy. You're allowed to have these things. Now, the fear of the approach for the per for, you know, because some guy may bash your head is one reason, but here's another reason. Remember earlier on I was talking about pre-selection? Can you imagine living in a small tribe of 100 people, and of those people, only four or five of the girls will be potential mates? 
The rest will be too old or too young or sickly or taken, pregnant, children. There's only going to be a few of them that are possibilities for you with a high enough S and R value to trigger attraction for you, right? Imagine blowing it with her. She's going to tell the other girls within her peer group, and you will not have sex ever in that community. And your <laughs> genes, your genes will be unapologetically weeded out of existence. And your ancestors had to deal with this hundreds of thousands of years of this. This is how we lived. So your emotional circuitry is designed to be afraid of the approach for a reason. You know, you're fearing your survival and your replication value, right? Or, or rather, your survival and replication, right? That's what you fear. It's there for a reason. It's not going away. Well, similarly, if we go all the way, that's, that's our problem, but women can't appreciate that because they don't have that hardwired into, into their brains, all right? Look to the end in the seduction stage. We have last-minute resistance. Women, all women, every single woman I've been with has given me last-minute resistance the first time I had sex with her. LMR. Now, our job is not to just simply try to, you know, manipulate her into bed, but legitimately make her feel less discomfort. Because it's not her fault that, you know, here she is, she feels great, she's making out with you, her emotional circuitry is saying, yes, this is good for me. I'm doing a good thing by aligning myself with someone with a high SNR value. And then all of a sudden, she hits the brakes, usually at the point where the panties, you know, panties are staying on, and if you try to get the panties, she's like, <laughs> right? Now, I asked a, a girlfriend of mine what that felt like, and she said that it felt like putting $10,000 on red in roulette and hoping it lands. That's the best, I mean, I went into deep discussion with her to try to describe it, because I don't get last-minute resistance. I want her. Why does she? So we have to respect that her emotional circuitry is designed that way. Hell, I mean, 40,000 years ago, there was no such thing as the condom or the pill. You have sex with somebody, and they don't take care of your baby. They don't stick around. They haven't proven their, their worthiness of sticking around. Then, you know, your baby could die. That's, that's major. Or, hell, a big alpha male could kill your baby and take the girl. That was 40,000 years ago. That's what it was like. That's a legitimate problem hardwired into her, her circuitry. So I have uh, one little body language thing that I want to talk about with, uh, regards, to last minute, uh, with regards to seduction in last minute resistance. There's five pieces, but the one I'm going to talk to you about is called the freeze out. Now you already know the freeze out, to be honest. Every time that you did one of those keno escalations, you did a freeze out, didn't you? All right, get off me. Push away, freeze out. Well, if you do that to a woman in bed, for her to say, you know, you, you go for her panties or her bra. It's different for, for, for women, for uh, different women. You, um, you go for it, and she goes, no. All you have to do, instead of going, ah, oh, come on, baby, come on, no one's watching, and keep going, you go for her boob, and she takes it away, you go for her boob, she takes it away, goes for the boob, and you start playing that little game, manhandle game, right? The backseat of your car. But instead, if she said no, you said, I understand. Put your pants back on act normal, and go back into the same sort of mode you were in when you first met them, non-sexual. You freeze out, just like you did every keno escalation. By doing that in bed, here she is. She, she felt arousal. She was attracted to you. You're in bed with her. She just got that triggering of LMR, and all you have to do is say to her, look, whether we have sex or not, I'm sticking around. That's the only purpose for the LMR to, to exist in the first place. So LMR reduces dramatically. You do a freeze out. And then she feels the motivation to seduce you. And I've been there enough times to have learned that that really is how last minute resistance functions. All right. If you'd like to see these body language um, theories, these um, gambits, tools, applied, you can do so by heading to www.mysterymethod.com. I do in-field workshops. I bring people into the field. I do two things. I demonstrate it. I put my money where my mouth is. I demonstrate it live. You will get to watch me. And then I will push you into set. 
I will throw you into the field. I'll be there with you. You won't die. Don't worry. You'll feel like that. It's gonna, you're going to die. It's pretty bad. But you will survive it. And you get a little flooded, a little desensitized to it. You'll still have fear. But I'm not so concerned with trying to build confident men. I'm out to build competent men. So come in the field with me. I'll show you how it's done. All right? Once again, I'm Mystery, and uh, keep it up. I'd like to uh, introduce you to something completely different. I've got a couple of good friends named uh, Steve and Eric. They kind of uh, go through different monikers. Uh, my friend uh, Eric goes by Hypnotica. Sometimes they're called the renegade hypnotists, the bad boys of hypnosis. They've done a lot of, uh, a lot of work with me. They're good friends. I've known them for a lot of years now. And uh, they've done a lot of work with a lot of friends of mine. And uh, they, they bring a little different perspective to the table when it comes to men, women, attraction. Uh, these guys have really helped me uh, understand the meaning of being a man in a lot of ways and how to interact with a woman to communicate, I'm the man in this relationship. And I'd like you to just kind of watch as you... As they're teaching, just notice how they communicate. Notice their communication. See what you can learn from it. You guys ready? All right, give a big warm welcome to my friends, Steve and Eric. Thank you. you guys welcome, guys. Test. Cool. Take it away. All right. Well, first of all, did you, uh, have you guys digested some of the stuff? I don't know what you guys did last night, but is some of the stuff starting to seep in a little bit? It will continue to seep in, and it will always seep in. You know, so just kind of imagine that you're like a nice little filter that detracts and, and attracts the, the, the good material, the material that's useful for you. Uh, you're going to hear things that are presented from different sources that have the same, the same attraction and the same um, criteria with it. It's just presented differently. You know, there's not one thing that works and one thing that doesn't work. It's your own style. It's what you're going to bring to the table. Each and every one of you are men. You all have your own personality, which is perfect. And uh, I just hope that each one of you guys bring to the table and bring to life and this planet what being a man's all about. And being a man is about being strong. You know, it's about being flexible, compassionate, um, soft, hard. The, the whole the whole basics what I've been seeing in the especially you know and, I, and I'm tailored a little bit more to the adult entertainment industry but I'm seeing a lot of weak guys and this is not a good thing this is not a good thing and this comes in your body language as well you know your thoughts affect your body language you know, what's going on on the inside? So we're gonna, I'm going to digress a little bit back to a little bit on the inner game. But the inner game and your thoughts affect how you, you, you react. And if you don't think that's true, just think about a time when you're, you're pissed off. You may not try to show it, but how many people are get pissed off, try to hide it, but they know they can't. It's there. Face is flush, you know, or you want to laugh. You're thinking the thoughts, but your body's responding. This is how important is it to understand that this mind-body connection you know, is there within you. So we're going to hit it on one level, everything from a spiritual level. You know, what is it, being a man, what is your mission in life? Because weak guys, and it's from a, a, a book that was out there. I think it's a great book. Uh, I don't know if any of you have ever read F.J. Shark's uh, How to Be the Jerk Women Love. Okay. The title, he probably could have made a lot more money with a different title, but the information in there is a very good information. And he talks about, you know, the nice guy, Coming extinct because he's not going to reproduce. It's, it's funny, but it's true, you know, on a certain level. Our job is to build this, this, this whole tradition of being a man up and being a man who doesn't have to lie, being a man who's straightforward, that has straight integrity with who he is, what he wants. And this is our 
our goal on this su subject. So Steve's going to talk a little bit about thoughts and body language and how they affect and what you can do to align yourself with that. So Wilhelm Reich was uh, one of the students of, uh, are you guys familiar with any of his writings? He was one of the students of uh, Freud. What he said was the issues get trapped in the tissues. And with this, what, what's really important is a lot of people think there's a separation between mind and body. There isn't. I mean, I've, I'm, I'm trained as a holistic health practitioner, and I'm a master hypnotist. The thing that, that's really key is all of us have had a situation. You get up every day, you go do your job. You come home, you lock into whatever your, your post-work activity is. Then you meet someone special, a special girl, you start connecting. It becomes, it's the same thing, but there's a different tilt on it because somebody special has come into your life. All of a sudden, you start noticing more, some of the more pleasant things in life. Not just the girl, but because of them, you take time to, to evaluate that. Then if you get in a little squabble after the newness wears off, two or three weeks later, all of a sudden you go, shit, the world sucks again. You know, and then, well, it's true. And then you, you go through this, this implosion, and it's because of the thoughts. What's changed? You know, you're still going to work, you're still coming home, you're still doing the other activities, but you're putting a lot of value on somebody else's uh, interaction with you. Uh, I, I do a lot of the, the how to get to the resolution state. Um, I don't know if you guys are interested in doing an exercise or not, but I have a... a when I used to do suicide intervention, I used to have just like maybe three to six seconds to neutralize negative thought. If you guys are interested in this, I'll show you guys how to do this thing. You guys want to play a game? Okay. Um, normally at these things we do just lectures, but this is a real simple one. It'll translate well. What I want you to do is close your eyes. Now, so I can scan the room still. If you want to play this game, what you need to do is think of a thought and an emo that has an emotion to it that your life will be much more enhanced when you no longer have a negative emotional impact. I want you to raise your right hand up as soon as you have that. Okay, here's what, lower your hand. Now what I want you to do is keep your eyes closed. Keep that thought going in your mind. Here's what you need to do. Think of where you feel that in your body. And usually it'll connect in two or three different places. You know, just nod your heads when you have that. Perfect. Here's the next step. Notice how those spots are all connected. Is it like a glob? Is it like little threads? Is it knotted? Is it like a rope? Is it a chain? Whatever it is, I don't even care. But just nod your head when you have that component. Now here's the real tricky part. Don't think about this, but notice what color is it? And then what I want you to do is put your hands together, palms together, out in front of you, kind of like you're doing the prayer, prayer thing. And move your hands up above your eye level. Keep your eyes closed. Now open where the thumbs meet so that with your eyes closed, it's facing your eyes. Open it up. Now make that, that negative emotion go right behind the eyelids and the eyes. Now notice the color. Now shoot it out into your hands. Catch it into your open hands. Open your eyes and shoot it into the hands. If, it's, if your hands went down below eye level, push it, at a, push it up above eye level. Notice the difference in the body already. But you want to push it above eye level. Lift it up. If you push it above eye level, it will shut the sound off because you guys also have an associated. Open your eyes and shoot it out there. And here's what you do. Just go, be gone. Now, 
hold your hand up there and notice how it's cleared. Now what you do is you take this energy back in through the eyes, close the eyes, and breathe into the stomach. Exhale through the mouth. And then one more breath, slowly in through the nose, down to the, the belly button. And as you exhale, open your eyes and notice a clearing. Now here's what I need you to do. Go in and test it. What, this, what the technique, I could explain all the technicalities of it. If you do this every time you get a negative thought, and you don't have to stick it, your hands up like this, it's a general place, but shoot it just out about you know, a foot or so from you, and whew, be gone. The thing is, is if you do this, it's like an onion. You're peeling off layers of it. It's, it's a real simple technique, but if you practice doing this, this is the first level of getting rid of negative thoughts that keep triggering feedback loops. It's a little bit of hypnosis, you know, but it's a real light level. But what I want you to do is, your eyes are all open now, close your eyes, go back and try to bring in any of the emotion with it. You still will remember the scene, situation, or event, but without the emotion. It's like Reich said, emotions are emotions, energies and motions. They trap into the body. Once you, once you move those away, you still want to remember the players because then you can take the lesson from it, the wisdom of the lesson. So how'd that work for you? The thing is, if you, it's a real simple exercise. And like when I do this work with people, what I do is I have them do it over and over and over. It's a real simple task. And because it's so simple, people mistake that it, it, ah, it's not really that worthy. The point is, if you keep using it over and over, pretty soon they'll start doing it themselves. You'll start weaving away the negative thoughts. Then you're left with better thoughts inside there. Um, some of the metaphors that can be useful if you're going to go on a, a different level is <clears throat> one metaphor could be that we'll go back to the, the old b body parts of a car, that you're, you're building your car. You know, you've, you've given, you got given, a, say, an old 57 Chevy, okay, and all these rusted parts that are on there, these are all the old parts that are the unuseful thoughts. And you want to fix this car. You want this car to be a hot rod. So you go in there and you're like, okay, well, first thing is the carburetor. So you fix the carburetor. Well, does the whole car run yet? No. So you go in there and you say, okay, well, the timing belt. Okay, cool. I got it down. I'm stoked. No. It, this is the, like the onion and the layers. It's, it, it's there. Then there comes a point where everything just clicks. But you have to work on the stuff that's holding you back. If you have one train going that way and five trains going this way and they're pulling, you're going to get a certain resistance. You want to line all those to go in, 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 in the same direction. And it does get better. It gets faster as time goes on. Another metaphor might be, you um, imagine you were born at the bottom of the ocean. You know, at first you're, you're free and you don't realize that you have chains on you. So you try to swim up and there gets a point where all of a sudden the chains click in. And they're all different levels. They're all different uh, heights and width. And all of a sudden, boom, you hit the first one. You're like, well, what is that? You don't know what to do. You're kind of stuck. So you, you struggle, you struggle, then you look down, you realize that, you know, there's something, you cut it. And then you go a little further and boom, you hit another point. You know, and, and as time goes on, you cut more and more and you're getting lighter and lighter. But pretty soon, as you start building in the positive thoughts, you're adding like buoys are attaching to you. So not only are you starting to get a pull up and, and something's pulling you down, you're getting less of these, more of these, and pretty much you're starting to, to float. There's a, did anyone read the, the, the book, The Peaceful Warrior Within? good book. It's actually the first book that I ever started reading when I started to go on my own search years and years ago. And it goes like this. I'm walking down the street. It's a dark street. I don't know where I am, but I'm walking. I fall into a hole, a manhole, and I'm lost. It takes me forever. I'm feeling around. Everything feels unfamiliar. I have no idea where I'm at. All of a sudden, I feel something. Wrap both hands around it, and I find it's a ladder. I climb out and I walk down the street. Chapter two, I'm walking down that same street. I fall into the same manhole. Once again, I'm lost, I don't know where I'm at. But this time I have a little bit more awareness. I find that and I climb out. Chapter three, I'm walking down that same street. I fall into the manhole. This time I know where I'm at, but I climb out. Chapter four, I'm walking down that same street. I see the manhole, I walk around it. Chapter five, I walk down a new street. 
this is the same process. This whole process is so integrated within your body, mind, and spirit. And it's a matter of understanding that you may really want to be there right now. Well, you've got to do some work on yourself to get your body language in tune with what it is you want. There was times where I stayed at my house when all my friends called me up and said, hey, we're going to go out like this. And I was working on myself. And I said, no. You know, I had beliefs. I had, you know, and uh, David and, and I, you know, we used to sit together back in the day with our beliefs that used to hold us back. And we used to you mind line them and reframe them and, and try to work on them and change our beliefs. And there's books that are, that are three or four pages long that are just beliefs that, I, you know, I believed about myself at the time. And that was what was holding me back at the time. You have to put the time in to work on yourself in order to get to where you want to go. Now we're going to talk a little bit about what works in body language. That's just the, that's the, the crap part of it. Now let's talk about sexual communication and body language. Like I said, I've been in the industry for 12 years in the, in the, the adult entertainment. That right there, that's the best way to get a girl's attention. Right there, you know. That's the first thing. You've got to get their attention. Without their attention, you're not there. So remember that. Awareness. Awareness works on a lot of different levels. There's times when you're really aware with yourself. You think you've got it going on and you know what you're talking about. How many times have you ever seen this guy? And it's, it's a little bit unnerving to watch this. When guys are talking to girls, and it's obvious that they think that they're the Mac Daddy, and the girl's got this look on her face like, get the hell away from me. But they keep on talking. You ever seen that? Okay. I was talking to a girl last night that I met, um, and I was supposed to go home and sleep. I know, but I didn't. <laughs> so I guess that's what Vegas is for. But I was talking to her, and she brought it up. She, you know, I was, she brought it up, and she said, you know, guys need to be more aware of what a girl is saying. And this comes into everything about what Mystery was talking about, what everyone else has been talking about. Be aware, because if there's cues that she's trying to get the hell away from you, you back off. Be aware of that. Keep that in your mind. There are also cues that, that say, come on closer. Come away closer to me. You know, so you've got to be aware of that. Open up your perceptions. You know, you have to be in what they call uptime. Do you, does anyone know what uptime and downtime is? It's a neuro-linguistic program uh, pattern. Downtime is when you're in trance, when you're internal. You're hearing what you're hearing. You're feeling what you're feeling. You know, it's just a, a downtime. It's a meditative point. Uptime is when all your, your awareness is on the outside. You get, kind of get this if anyone's ever been in an accident or, or had something kind of scary going on when all of a sudden your senses are alive. That's uptime. When you're meeting someone, you want to be in uptime. You want to be calibrating what's going on. Where are you? You know, um, is the information that you're saying, is she interested? Is she not interested? Be in uptime. This is a real bad time to be in downtime when you're sitting there and you're talking to yourself going, I don't think she's going to like me. And what did you say that for? And, you know, is, is my shirt too tight? And, you know, just things. That doesn't help you out, guys. Be on the uptime and be prepared ahead of time with that. Let me make a little segue here. Uh, I talked to a couple guys. They caught me when I was going out for lunch. There's a thing about uh, internal dialogue. You guys ever get bothered with this stuff? Like when you're doing it? Let me see a show of hands. You guys want to do another real quick exercise? This is, a, this is another thing we did because like when I was working with the suicide intervention, they had these voices that were firing off over and over and over. This one's real quick, but it works real profound. Um, you got to don't cross your legs. Don't cross your arms, but you want to go in and close your eyes now. Go inside. These are just real quick little hypnosis things, but this is going to be an eyes open trance after I show you how to do it. Now, here's what I want you to do. If all of you started talking right now, it would just be too overwhelming. I wouldn't even understand what all of you were trying to say to me. But if you go inside, get one voice that kind of annoys you, you know, that's kind of, a, you know, it's, it's, it's rattling off. When you have it, raise your hands. Okay, cool. Here's what I want you to do. Set your hand down. Keep the voice going. Keep a little sound bite where it's going. Now, here's what I want you to do. Forget the words. The words don't matter. What matters is how is it saying it to you? Is it like a little raggy, nasty, nagging voice going, yeah, 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 yeah? 
you know notice how that sounds now that voice is also connecting into an internal feeling that's an internal dialogue going into a feeling in your body usually it hits two or three spots nod your heads when you have that spot located the first one the second and third just nod your head when I see you guys looking like those little dogs in the backs of the Cadillacs, I'll know we're ready to go. Cool. Here's what I want you to do. Again, stick your, keep your eyes closed. Stick your hands out in front of you again, above eye level. Now again, what you're going to do is let, it, let that voice now shift into a color. Go zzzz. Shift it up between that space between the eyes and the eyelids. Put your hands out in front of you. Now shoot that out into your hands. Open your eyes, shoot it out into the hands. Look up into the hands, make sure the hands are above eye level. And now what I want you to do is look at that as though it's a little ball, like no bigger than a tennis ball or an orange. What color is it? Just notice that. Then what you do is pretend that ball staying in space. It's going to stay right there, but then move your hands out to the side. Look at the space where the ball's sticking and move your hands out to the side, just to where you can still see your hands on the periphery. Notice how it shuts it off. Now what you want to do is let that thing, just as you have it out there, Notice where that ball is, notice where your hands are, and then look at a third point of attention above eye level across the room. Now, here's the real fun part of this. As you pull your hands back in, notice how whatever color that ball was, as you move your hands in, it becomes clear. The ball becomes clear. It is completely clear. And now, when you hold it there, a new voice is going to be in there. I don't care what the words were, but Walt Disney had a character. It was called Goofy. Now here's what the tonality in that voice is. If Put your hands above eye level. Hold that clear ball. Now that voice is going to shift into Goofy. It's going to go, <laughs> you see there? Let it go in there. Now take that cleared ball with that Goofy voice and move it back in. Close your eyes, absorb it into that spot. So now that before that can ever happen again, you have the, the voice of Goofy going, <laughs> you're messed up. <laughs> now, close your eyes, take another deep breath into the stomach. Exhale. And then take a, a second breath all the way in. Exhale, let it all the way out. Now, notice how that, open your eyes and come back into the room. Now, go back in and try to access that voice. Know what's, know what's going to happen. It's really hard to take criticism. Whatever the content, whatever the words that were being said, it doesn't matter. Go it's really hard when Goofy's saying, you're screwing up, <laughs> she doesn't like you, <laughs> you know, all that stuff. It doesn't matter anymore. I mean, who's going to take criticism from Goofy? So go back in and test it. The thing is, we do, we do these things and we shift. It's, it's actually what they call submodal. It's a lot of work that Christina Hall did in NLP. And it's shifting the submodalities of the power of that. And it, bec it becomes a real empowering thing. If, you, if you're plagued with internal dialogue, if you're talking with a woman and you're approaching her, look at her as the first. I do this with kids that have ADD. I've done it with hundreds of them. It works incredibly well. What you do is you look at, I tell the kid, we're going to play a game. You can't tell anybody unless you really like them. But here's how it is. You look at the teacher. Just don't and, say it's our little secret. Okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> no. Shut up. Anyways, you, you look at the teacher first, and then you look at two You look at two points out at the periphery, it will shut off the internal dialogue. So if you're looking at a woman and you're getting kind of nervous, oh my God, the voices are going off, look at her, look above eye level, and then look past her. If you go into three points of attention, then you'll go into the alpha state will happen and the voices will shut up. 
you know, when you go out to the lunch or the dinner break or whatever, practice doing this. If you start practicing with these exercises, they're very simple, they're very direct. But also, you don't have time for the silly voices coming in to mess with you. You got things to do. Remember, guys, the map is not the territory. That's a, that's a big NLP t uh, term about your own internal map is not the world. You may think it's the world, but it's not. It's just a bunch of electro electrical uh, impulses, blah, 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 that are on the inside that are forming the frames in the way you look at the world, your own paradigm of it. You know? And anything can be changed. You know? So go in there and play with it. That's what it's for. A fun learning. A fun learning a long time ago when I was first... And this is after I set the, the wrong frame with a relationship that I had, you know, eight, eight to ten years ago. Um, about the first time I was going to introduce another woman into our little triangle that we had. And here I was with her, my, my primary, and the secondary. And I was here, and, I, you know, everything was working out fine. And I made the mistake of just something simple like this can really throw you off. Of uh -oh. letting go of my primary and putting full effect into the secondary. Primary didn't like that. So small things like this. I mean, it's so simple, but just a movement caused a lot of drama for me that night. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of drama, you know? So just be aware of how body language can affect because they can go extreme motors and even a simple movement can, can, can affect you on that. Um, there's, a, there's about three techniques that I've found over the years from modeling dancers to modeling guys that can go into the topless bar and boom, pull out dancers all the time. There's about three techniques that really work, okay, that I've noticed. Now, there's, uh, you know, there's other ones that have been going on too, and um, like I said, there's not just one way of doing it. The first one that I've noticed, and if you can go on with the strength, is the very direct, focused in, boom, in their space. When you enter to their degree, their space, not so close that you're, you look in kind of cycle, but just enough where if I'm feeling comfortable here with someone, if I'm right here, it's like the two bubbles are merging. You know, does anyone know what I mean by the two bubbles are merging? The, the, the two awarenesses, you kind of feel like, hey, I'm in their space. You know, she's in my space. It feels like maybe a little uncomfortable. If you go in with that and you have a straight confidence and a very calm demeanor about you, and a very secure uh, meaner, demeanor, and you know what direction you're going, this technique is the best for sexual overtones. It's not a matter of, you know, getting in there and being crude. It's a matter of being in there like, we're in this space together. It seems a little uncomfortable. I'm the man, you're the woman. It's safe for you to come in this direction and to lead them in this direction. It's a very intimate place. It's not a very, I'm going to eat this, 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 this. It's a very understanding, a very uh, sympathetic, but a very focused place that you want to take the communication. Okay, it's very, very powerful. That's, if you want to go in there and get one night stands, if you could pull that off and, and do it without having the, the, the creepy look, the creepy looks like, ah, it's, it's, that, uh -huh. it's not going to work. Just get in that, that uncomfortable space and practice, you know, find out, you know, even with guys, you can, you can be talking here, it feels comfortable, and then all of a sudden like this, you get that look like, okay, bro, what are you doing? Back off. You know, find where that is to people. And whether you just go out one day and you find out, you know, talk to people and, and, and do it step by step so you don't overwhelm yourself. Just go up to people and notice where you start to feel that internal, this feels a little uncomfortable. Back out of it. Test it. Because once you start testing it, it starts becoming mainstreamed. Once it becomes mainstream, it becomes natural for you to find out where that is and to naturally go into it when, when and where you want, then add in another piece. Step into it and learn to breathe into it. So you're starting to feel comfortable and you're starting to move the energy that's inside of it. Then from there, have that calm demeanor where you can understand and you have that, you know, the, the intensity is very direct in this. You know, it's a very calm intensity. It's not a... <laughs> it's not like that. It's more like... All right, here we are together. It's a very grounded spot. And this is where you, as a man, bring out your self-confidence, your control, your power, and you lead them to say, this is where we want to go. And they, they usually follow if you have that strength inside yourself. That's, that's one technique. 
the artistic evaluation. This is, a, this is a very strong one where you're giving a mixed signal. It's kind of the yin, the yang, a little bit where you don't want to give it all up front, you know, in their face like, like this because you create a polarity response. How many people have noticed guys that are so into people and they're just talking and talking and it's like the person's doing one of these? In NLP, it's called the polarity response. It's, it's, it's flipping the opposite. It's like those magnets that you go. It's just, you know, one's going and the other one's trying to get away. Don't do that. The, the artistic evaluation, the reason I call it that is just because it, it would be like what you were if you were about to buy an artistic piece. It's kind of like, like this. Your body, the majority of your body is kind of leaning in, saying, hmm. But the mind is leaning back, evaluating, and saying, I'm not sure if I, I, I really want this. You know, and it's not like this. You know, it's, it's the slight tilt, and it's the, hmm, it's the evaluation process. You know, this is, this is the evaluation process. If you're in a place that you know people that you've been familiar with, or even if you're just going up to have a conversation at first and you don't want to go in with the, the hard approach, it's, it's kind of like the, the relaxed, hmm, you know, and talk to them at this level and, and just kind of joke around and, and back and forth, back and forth. You know, it's just one of these. That's a very powerful approach for, for kind of evaluating, like, you know, you're telling them, well, yeah, but no. And that's very strong to have that kind of body language inside yourselves to let you know that, yeah, I, you know, I want you, but I don't know if you're good for me or if I really want you. It, it's useful for that. The neutral energy, well, the, the neutral energy is not really a technique to get someone, but there's different energy approaches too. If you're neutral, you know, there's a lot of times where I interact with women that it's not appropriate to be sexual. It's not appropriate to throw that out there. So it's just the neutral and it's... it's you know, it's like casual conversation. This is a good place to be with guys as girlfriends. You know, and I talk about this and, and we have strong opinions on it about guys wanting to have sex with your friend's girlfriend or in that situation. I know a lot of guys get in these situations where, yeah, but she came on to me. Okay, our thoughts on that are very extreme. Uh, what I consider, it's called being an ass bandit. It's the lowest form of man there is. Okay. To betray the trust of another man, especially someone who's close to you, um, on that level, it, like I said, is the ultimate form. And if you've done it, forgive yourself because people make mistakes. But don't do it again. It's just a very neutral place to be. Use that. A guy at the last seminar said, you know, but what if she's coming on to me? I said, well, what would you do if that was your mom? How, how would that feel to you? What would you? How would you react? And how would you um, step back from it? Step back from it. Because once you cross that tradition, okay, there's a huge tradition that goes back for centuries and centuries about the strength of being a man. Don't cross that because you'll be cutting your own source from what being a true man is really about. Even though it may be extremely tempting, have the thoughts, whatever, that's normal. Don't do it. It's just a side note. I know you have thoughts on that too, but we got to keep this G-rated. Um, I'm working on it. You know. <laughs> Here's a, a huge technique. I modeled this from a guy. Okay, I've been in the business a long time, and there's a handful of guys that I used to just marvel at. I mean, there was one guy I talk about, Bullet. He was about my age. He passed away this year from uh, cancer. Um, but he was a madman. This guy was about this tall. He had stringy hair, and he'd talk like this, and he'd just follow girls around, and he's like, hey, and he had a little pot belly. But this guy used to pull in women by the handful. He, he was extremely funny. He, you can actually see him in the, the Ron Jeremy uh, movie. You know, he's a guy wearing a pink hat. He was just an extreme fellow, but he was so magnetic, and his, his whole way about him was so powerful that he just pulls, pulled girls in. I'd be like, Bullet, you look like crap. He'd come into the club. I'd go, look, look at you. You're all sweaty. And go, I'm like, when was the last time you took a shower? He'd be like, ah, I took a shower like five girls ago, you know, and just do his thing. And I was just like, <laughs> you're such a sick pig. But it didn't matter. It didn't matter. This guy was just on it. And he used to run with another guy, and I modeled this off of him. And at the time when I was learning this whole thing, um, I was like, well, it's kind, of, it's kind of out there. It's kind of putting it in your face. And, and at the time, I didn't have that comfortable feeling of being that, that blatantly, having those sexual tones blatantly out there. And um, so I modeled it and I, and I talked about it, but I never really put it into um, use until I felt that own self-confidence within myself about 
it's okay to be a man. It's okay to be sexual in nature. And it's okay to explore these areas. And the technique goes like this. And I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but he would be talking there. He'd have a little body language. He'd move back. And he, I mean, he had, the, he had it going on. He, 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 was, he was good at what he did. And he didn't know any patterns or he didn't know any, te- any techniques. He was just a natural at doing this. I don't think the guy read a book in his life. But he'd be sitting there and he'd be talking to the girl and he'd have his little, his little thing and he'd be communicating. And he would look down at her breasts or even at her lip. He would just kind of like be talking to her. He'd look down look at her breast, and then slowly back up to her eyes, breathe, bite his lower lip, talk to her, go back down, back up, lick his lip, talk to her. And what he was doing is he was not talking sexual to her, but his body language was all over the place. And since I've integrated that in my whole way of being, it's extremely powerful. I mean, sometimes I do it just to have fun. And when I was doing uh, work on this one girl, um, you know, it, it was so anchored that now to the point of all she's got to do is come in and, and look at her and just go bite, bite the lip. And she just goes, whoosh, lips expand. The whole sexual energy is there. I suggest you practice this in the mirror. So remember, you're talking to a girl and, 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 and don't do this unless you feel like you're ready. Okay, if you feel like you have that backing, do it. But if not, hold on a second, because it can get a little, like, weird. And it took me a long time to build up the confidence inside to say, hey, this is okay to go with this, this area, because it's out there. They know what you're talking about on an unconscious level. Look at the eyes, be talking to them. And not like this. This isn't like a quick thing, like you're back and forth, back and forth. This is a very subtle thing where you're talking to them. All right, go down, back up, and you're talking bite, lick the lips, you know, be communicating, and just subtle glances, you know, not, not like, not staring, just subtle glances, back up, and you're just talking. This technique is so powerful, and if you stay with it, and you're in that energy, it'll do a lot for you. It, it does take practice, but once you have this down, let me tell you guys, there's not many girls out there, and I test it all the time. I test it on 30 to 50 girls a night, and I have a free flow of women coming through all the time and it's always there and I test these things test them and I test them I know it works what doesn't work this works and these girls are used to being hustled all the time I mean when you can work with the girls in the strip clubs I mean this is the hardcore beta testing I mean when it works there Eric when you were doing that I was starting to feel a little flushed is that normal we could feel it you only got that because I was looking at your butt okay it's different can you see back there wow (laughs) But it's a very powerful technique. It's very simple, but it's powerful. And, and I don't, you know, well, I, I get excited about things, but I don't get to the point where there's a few things that really work that are like, this is powerful if you get it down and you are congruent with it. And you got to play with it. You got to go out and just realize it's just fun. Go have a good time doing it. I mean, you're playing mind chess, you know, just go out and enjoy the process of it. Yeah. You know, calibrate to this stuff. Yeah, there's things, that, remember too, that there's a thing called fractionization hypnosis. If you just try to get someone in hypnosis and you just go straight all the way down, you'll get to a certain level. There's, a, there's a, something to the ability of bringing them up, bringing them down, bringing them up, bringing them down further, bringing them up, bringing them down further, just for a safety me- mechanism in their own minds. This is the same way. You know, you can get into that mode where you're talking and all of a sudden you, you start grooving like this and you say, ah, oh, just joking. Um, the, the way you can tell it's working is there is a physical reaction that, that they see. You see their eyes dilate. Their eyes will dilate like you just whipped out a hundred dollar bill. It's, it dilates. Their lower lip will expand. You know, their breathing will slow down. They will become more flush. And this is, this is the whole thing about awareness too. Be aware. Be in uptown. Be calibrating what's going on. You know, and you'll notice this. And, and you can even say to them, your breathing's changed. You notice that. And they go, oh shit, he caught me on it. And you go, that, that's okay. You relax. You know, this is okay to feel this good. It's okay to be a woman and it's okay to breathe in this energy. You know, and say, now try this. Notice as you take the energy down and you move it through your body, how that can begin to expand. And, and you simply explore it. This isn't about manipulation on this level. This is about being a man and giving a woman an opportunity to experience someone who can bring that inner 
sexual being out of them and, and being confident enough to do that because there's not many guys out there that know what the fuck they're doing. So know what, the, you know what mm-hmm. they're doing. No, I'm sorry. Really, there's not many really, guys out really. there that know what they're doing. <laughs> you know what I was thinking, guys? Um, since we've only got a few minutes, I um, thought maybe we'd do a little question and answer. Okay. Are you guys good with that? Yeah. yeah you absolutely. have anything really important uh, on there you want to share before we do? There's just one more point that I want to make. To everything that you guys do out there, I don't know if you guys are in your own businesses or whatever, but the thing that you need to remember, every interaction with another person, and this is about double your dating, there's a a concept called opportunity cost. You have to evaluate what it's going to cost to interact with this other person and make it worth your while. You know, you're going to invest your time there. And make sure that it's where, where you want to go. Again, what I was talking about yesterday, if you don't know where you're going, you're not going to know how to calibrate whether you're getting there or not. So you need to understand. And it's going to cost you time, not a lot of money, but, but know that there's, for every opportunity out there, there is a cost to it. So make sure it's what you want to invest your time in. Get your direction set and go that direction. Do you guys have questions? Hmm. Who's, got a, who's got a mic? Over here. All right, you want to stand up right here? we got a mic up in the front. You got to use the other side. <laughs> does it? Does this side work better? Yeah. Uh, Mark from La Jolla. Uh, Steve, can you go through that Western hug piece again? That's okay for a Western hug. Okay. Where is she? No, no. She'll come up here. We'll do it on camera. She's over being camera shy now. Here's the traditional way that people, hi, how you doing? Smile for the camera. Okay, here's the way that most people hug. They move away from the heart. Oh, another thing. If you guys are going up to hug the girl, some of these guys, they try to hug to feel the breast. The women are going to know that. I mean, and they just go, dude, you're a creep. Back off. But suppose I'm not trying to feel your breasts. Okay. <laughs> Okay, this is a regular hug out of the Western. What I do is hug. I go, just a minute. I want to feel your heart. And then move over. And they start to melt. She's getting nervous because she knows you're looking. But there becomes a connection when you do that. (laughs) The point is, is connect at the heart. And don't think... Any, yeah, you can get out of here. <laughs> the point, the whole point of it is you want to connect at the heart and really connect with her. Did she mess with my mic? She moved her question. We have another Stand question. Stand up over here. This question over here. Yeah. I'm Suzanne from Detroit, Michigan. I want to know how long does that process take, that te- technique? The biting of the lip, the breathing. How long does that take, approximately? Oh, why don't you? You? Oh, never mind. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> um, once you get it down, um, you practice it. It takes 30 seconds, if that. It, it's a process in, in a conversation. You know, it could be just real quick talking, and and you're, you're already putting the messages across. The more messages you put across, the more powerful it's going to become over time. And it's a testing thing. You know, it's like if you get that, you look up, and you're getting that. You know, it's okay. You know, maybe stop there. But, it, but once you get that and you start to build on it, it's like a snowball. It just gets stronger and stronger. And then once there's that unconscious body language recognition, that's when you can really start to move it. Well, my question is, if your friend, the sweaty pig, <laughs> a woman wouldn't give him 30 seconds, she'd give him two, and she'd move away. So how does that work with someone like that? Okay, the Bullet was the, is the one guy. It was his friend that, that I was talking about. Bullet, since he's died, I have no clue how Bullet did it, okay? Bullet was just one of these rare breeds of guys, but he was a numbers game. He, didn't, he just went after it. But, you know, the girls he would walk in with were models. You know, he just went, 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 and he didn't care. He didn't care if a girl said, get away from me, you pig. You know, so he was on that level. But do, the, do you understand that... He was talking about Bullet's friend when he was talking about oh, this Oh, okay. Technique. No, I thought he was talking about... Yeah, so Bullet, he lived with a guy that they all kind of lived together. 
Um, his name was... Well, it wasn't the Sweaty Pig, in other words. Yeah, it wasn't Sweaty Pig. But I was just saying that they, they all lived together in this, this trio of guys that... I mean, just one story. The, the DEA once, you know... I mean, because they were, they were, they were in the, they were in the, the they were in the top, topless club in, industry, and uh, you know, um, a, a lot of crazy, wild things go on. Um, once they broke in, and J- Jerry, we'll say Jerry, uh, was there with six girls in his bed, you know, six girls in his bed having an orgy, and they came in, and, and there was nothing, there was nothing that they were looking for. It was, you know, you get dancers, and they they do a lot of stupid things, and when you fire them and stuff like that. Um, but there were six girls in bed, you know, and this is what their house was like all the time. This was a reality for them. And I used to be blown away because I was on this whole mission of like, you know, going out there and being the, the, the dude and just and watching these guys going, ah, here I am studying and I'm working on myself and I'm doing this. And, and how these guys just pull off, you know, six girls in bed, no problem, every single weekend. <sighs> that was a pattern interrupt for me, you know, to realize that there's stuff out there and, 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 and know that that's possible. But it happened all the time, you know, crazy wild guys. But that just goes to show that your attitude really affects, you know, um, who you are compared to, you know, patterns and techniques and everything like this. Just being a person who expands and goes on beyond the, the meteorology of the mundane, that's attractive. Being an individual in this society and being your own mind is attractive, whether it be a guy or a girl. In the communication process, the words that we utter is only 7% of it. The rest of it is body, positioning, and tonality. So, you know, there's a lot that could be going into this is going to be dealing more with body language here. But, you know, the, the, the truth of it is if you, get your, if you work on your tonality and you're congruent with what you're trying to convey, it will come out in your body because that's a communication without any words being said. Hmm. All right, well, we have to move forward, so give these guys a round of applause. Thank you. Thanks, boys. All right, I'd like to uh, introduce you to a friend of mine. Um, A lot of guys find it very valuable when I introduce women and have them share their experiences and their expertise in how to be more successful in the dating game. And uh, it's not often that I find a woman who not only understands you know what it's like to be a woman and can speak from a woman's perspective but also can empathize with men and can see things from a man's perspective uh, my next guest uh, patty contenta she's uh, written a book she has a website called sensuality secrets.com she's a world-class um, dance instructor world-class dancer And she's going to uh, teach you a bunch of lessons about body language, how to hold yourself, how to move yourself. So uh, give Patty Contenta a warm welcome. Just uh, sit down and join me here. Yeah, absolutely. I'm taking your name tag because you're no longer a member of the audience. You're now a presenter. You can't wear it around anymore. You're famous. <laughs> Everyone knows who you are. All right, so um, I'm just interested to hear what you think of what's happened so far today. Uh, it was very good. I, I'm amazed at Mystery's detail as to every step of the way what he does. And it does work. I saw him in action. Mm. <laughs> it truly does. And everybody, Eric, they've all really narrowed it down to a science. Mm. My approach is a little different in the sense that I'm more about body awareness, yourself, Mm. your own body, not necessarily about, you know, I mean, I do this with men, but I mean, um, not necessarily about if you do this, you'll come in closer. It's more about you as a person, what you need to do in order to make your body look its best. Mm. And posture is huge in ballroom dancing. And one of the things you mentioned you asked me to think about that, about the sexual threat. Yeah. And I was talking to Susan about that. She asked me about that also, what I thought about it. And um, if you can picture this, I competed for many years. And one of the things that we do before we go actually go onto the dance floor, we line up and picture 10 other couples, great looking women, good looking guys, all lined up and without saying a word, intimidating each other because 
you do want to be the guy that, or the couple that everybody's wondering if you're the best one out there and who's going to make it. So that sexual threat is necessary because I want to feel that my partner is there to step up because if he's not, that's going to affect me and our relationship on the dance floor. Mm. So that is very necessary. And a guy that can step up to that role, I think is like mm. awesome. You know what I was thinking? Um, maybe we could get uh, a couple of people that need some serious help to uh, come up here. Don't laugh. Might be you. <laughs> Heard you over there. Uh, and, uh, you know, you could do a little bit of a demonstration. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the concepts. What are the things that uh, men do wrong? Um, definitely coming on very strong. I was talking to Dr. Paul about that. I think some of the men tend to be very bold, but not sensual. They just come in, boom, head in instead of... What, what does the word sensual mean when you say bold but not sensual? Um, there's got to be some sort of a mystery behind a man mm -hmm. that he's not so obvious about where he's headed, right down to his eye contact. I mean, look at a woman's features. Look at her eyes, her ears, her jawline, her nose, her lips. Don't go right from there to there. I mean, yeah. almost every guy does that, from the eyes to the chest, back up to the eyes, back to the chest. And then, he, I mean, it's just... Like watching racquetball <laughs> vertically or something, huh? Constantly, constantly. And I noticed it last night. Even if she's wearing something revealing, don't go there. You know, mm -hmm. don't, if you can withhold that, I think is even better. Yeah, that's a really interesting point. You know, a lot of women go through the process of putting on the war paint and the whole get up and spend a lot of time. And when you are not affected by it, that says something about you when you're clearly not affected by it. Yeah. Mm. Okay. What else? What are some other mistakes? Um, and, and again, sensuality, what is, uh, what are you implying by that word? Someone that can appreciate looking from afar at first, not necessarily jumping in, because mm. you want to, to me, sen sensual is someone that can tease and not necessarily, again, give it all up, just like a woman that can tease and not necessarily spread her legs immediately. Okay. So, that a, <laughs> no, that's a, it's I a great that? point, actually. Um, most men don't like to be teased, especially when it comes to women. It's very frustrating. Ever been teased and hated it? Yeah, okay. Well, women like it. They tend to like it. And it tends to amplify their attraction. And now I'm, gonna, I'm talking about teasing not as in like on the playground, but teasing where they get a little bit of something they like and then it's taken away and they want more of it. Yes. Mm. And what was I, teasing? Okay. I don't know. I uh, took the ball okay. away from you. Go ahead. So, um, and we went to a club last night. I noticed the club where we were at, there was a crowd of people. It, it looked like I was describing it to some guys, like a zoo where the gates were flooded open and all the animals were in there. And you had wolves, hyenas, and just grabbing and touching. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm not going in there. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> but then there was the one or two lions or silverback gorillas that just kind of yeah. stood on the sidelines and watched. And that was so much more attractive. Like mm. it was, I wanted to go talk to him and I would have given him signs if I hadn't been, every step I took bumped and pushed and this, and I was really a little bit ridiculous probably to the other extreme. Mm. But that was much more attractive as to the other guys that were just constantly groping. I don't think most guys do that, but I was just looking at the extreme there. And, um, and they just didn't understand, like, you know, the woman, as they were saying, they won't look at you, but the guys kind of ignore that. So then what they do is, okay, I'll try this angle. Maybe she'll notice me. No, we see you. <laughs> we're just choosing not to look. <laughs> and then, and then they'll, um, and then they'll, they'll, they'll say like, do you want to dance? You're like, okay. And we do tend to say yes, just to be polite a little bit, but we'll turn our bodies so that we're like, okay, just don't do it. And then they say, okay, well, I'll try this angle. Then they get behind you because <laughs> they, they just notice in the front you keep turning around. So then he's behind you poking you and you're like, okay. At this point, you're just going to run away like you, you really did. And then women, what we do, because I was with uh, Mystery's girlfriend, we went out together. And uh, so we then, and then probably backfired on us also because then I started hugging onto her and she's hugging onto me. We're uh -oh. dancing together and now we're like, okay, great. Now we got five guys. <laughs> and it was hilarious. It really was. <laughs> so, but it was a definitely a fun experience and um, that was mm. the whole thing that was going on. So, That's interesting to hear a woman's perspective, isn't it? Of, I'll say yes, kind of to be nice and 
dance, and I'll kind of try to give the offish body language, but guys just try harder, right? And then she tries hugging her girlfriend, <laughs> and now there's five oh, guys. Oh. <laughs> you should have tried kissing her. That would have done oh, it. That would have gotten God. rid of all of them. They would have dispersed <laughs> it would like in an explosion. Okay, so let's talk specifically about, um, I mean, you're more... Uh, of an expert on how a person can work with, let's call it their internal body language, mm -hmm. what to start with, okay, not the sexual signaling, and the right. communication, Absolutely. all this kind of stuff we're talking about. Um, what would you tell the average person, the average you know guy that you met? What are the key things that he needs to do to just get started for his basic body language? Give me a list of you know a few. Um, if you look at the feet, they should both feet obviously on the ground and have your weight distribution on the whole foot. You know, not too far forward, not too far back. Stand up. Stand up. It's a great point. Hip distance apart, parallel. A lot of guys walk like a. Okay, so duck. hip so distance no. apart. Okay, your hip distance apart. Pointing forward, mm -hmm. not like this, not pointing in. Okay. Flat on the ground and distribute your weight evenly across both feet. So stand directly over them. Good. And then as David said, if you can feel the energy going from the ground, like your feet are rooted into the ground, going up your legs, through your midsection, all the way up to your chest, and then at that point you should be taking like a, almost like a deep breath and lifting your chest up and feeling like your chest is coming towards your, towards me, if you will. And in the process, you may feel your shoulder blades kind of push down. And I don't know if you guys can feel that, pushing your shoulder blades back. It kind of locks your body a little bit. And sometimes men forget the next step, uh, which they kind of do this and they leave their chins there. That's not very good, so you want to make sure that your, your, your neck is sitting back against your spine because that, that is really poor posture. Mm. So make sure that that chin is back. Excellent. Yeah. And not too far, not too far up, just like kind of relax, parallel to the floor a little more. Yeah. Drop okay, so uh, raise your hand if this is different than the way you normally stand. Good. Good. You're learning something. And you need to exaggerate a little bit because... That's the only way you'll get comfortable with it. As a dancer, I've spent hours in front of a mirror getting the right angle so that it looks most seductive when we dance. So, you know, this doesn't happen overnight. You have to always think about it. Mm -hmm. And then I thought I'd use some abbreviations. I don't even know what that is. Well, these sounds guys are exciting. Using it, so I figure I should make some. Oh, up. you're going to make up some cool <laughs> yeah. abbreviations. I like yeah. it. You like it, huh? This is going to be great. Okay. So, um, one of the things that the difference between a mature dancer and an immature dancer, like a mature man perhaps and an immature man, is uh, do you mind? This section right here. <laughs> Believe it or not, it's about the core and how strong our core is. And our core comes from, turn around, please. Our AP. Use me. Ass power. Sorry. Ass power. Ass power. Yes. Okay, you can turn back around. All right. All right. Because um, in my interview series, would you series, like to use my ass to demonstrate anything else? <laughs> we might have to talk about it before right. you. Jump I talked right into about it. Um, leading from the hips, and yeah. a lot of the people came up to me, Patty. What exactly do you mean by that? And they're all kind of pushing forward, and it's not really that. Uh, we use this in dancing a lot. A lot of our strength comes from our buttocks our ass mm. and using that power to actually move you forward so with every step you take you should be aware of your cheeks moving your legs forward mm. which will make your your core move forward because I could walk without thinking about it and I could walk and thinking about my cheek with every step I take and there's a certain strength I don't know if you saw do that. Do you see the difference? Yeah. Okay, do, do it again. Okay. Go both ways without, you All know, right. kind of, yeah. No ass. <laughs> There's no ass in this wall. No ass in that one. Okay. okay. Now there is ass. ass in this. And notice the difference? And even in the sound of my feet when they were on the ground, like we use that a lot when we dance. We know if, if a dancer is grounded, depending on how their feet is uh, the, the sound that they make contact to the floor. Mm. And I just know when I'm coaching, it's like, nope, you're not using your supporting leg, you're not using your butt muscles. So we start, we think about that. So that's something that, that's what I meant perhaps by leading from the hips, is that it actually comes from back here, not necessarily from, from there. So don't do this, <laughs> okay? Mm. So um, that's something that I wanted to tell you guys. From oh, <laughs> you're all walking like this? Okay. Good, <laughs> sit down. Excellent. 
All right. Uh, who, um, who's a little self-conscious because they know they really haven't worked on their posture enough in their life? Yeah, okay. Good. How about you two guys over there and you here? You guys want to come up here? You want to uh, mess with these guys a little bit? Let's have some fun. Don't be gentle with them, please. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So um, I'll go. do one at a time. <laughs> Who wants to go first? Okay, go ahead. So the first thing we're going to look at is um, your both feet are on the ground. Let's, uh, yeah, let's go stand off to the sides yeah. here. Work from the feet up. So your, ground, your feet are on the ground full. Feel your weight distribution in the whole foot. Get the energy to come up. You need to tuck that in a little bit there. See the chest came forward a little. You might want to lift your chest just a little bit more. Relax your shoulders. Don't let that come up. And then get that back in. Thank you. <laughs> Don't let this hang out. <laughs> okay, and you might you see where my hands are. You just want to feel this, the muscles here kind of working. Good, relax, relax here. Don't, 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 like, don't do this. Oh, there you go. Good. And um, squeeze these a little bit. There you go. Okay. Now, from that position, <laughs> don't, don't let this come out. This is, this is core, too. Like, sometimes you do this, and you can't, you can't let your stomach hang out because it shows, again, core power that you can hold this in as you walk. Good. Now, with every step, you, what's your name? George. George. With every step you take, George, we're going to turn around and walk towards Evan. I want you to think about each cheek with every step. So go ahead, nice and easy, slow, take, good. Okay, now turn around, stay. Your arms will naturally sway, so don't, sort of don't walk and do this because then you look a little stiff. So as you're walking, um, let your body sway naturally. Still thinking about this, that's the first part, good. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, that out. was almost naturally, wasn't almost. it? <laughs> it's like borderline okay, natural. Usually, if the right foot comes forward, the you know, it's an opposite contrived. going on. You don't want to. <laughs> so, can can nice. I ask you a question? Yeah. Cool. When you uh, make your hand match the leg like this, <laughs> does that look weird? <laughs> totally. I, 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 yeah, you were doing that. Does that seem natural to you guys? I don't know. Is that? Okay, go ahead. Okay, that's it. So now just relax. Do it again. Just think about your butt cheeks a little bit, chest out, and naturally walk. there. Okay. <laughs> Still has a little co arm hand coordination yeah, yeah, thing yeah, going yeah. on. That's all right. Okay, one more time. Go ahead, nice and easy. Okay, good. Now, as you walk, turn around, do it again. Face me. Try not to walk too much with your legs like, like a cowboy, a little bit more parallel. Go ahead, nice. And good, chin up. And all that's missing is a little bit of the arms there because they're yeah, just yeah, yeah. not swinging. Yeah, yeah. And they need to. And they take, need to swing with the opposite leg. Yeah, if you take a step forward with the left foot, <laughs> step forward with the left, stop. There you go. Now go with the right. Excellent. <laughs> now the left. Off the, all right. Hey, Craig, you got to lean back <laughs> on the, uh, So now keep going and try there. to naturally, whoop, there. Oh, oh. <laughs> this is going to take know, some practice. Now, you know what? Give, give him a big round of applause, Absolutely. please. <laughs> Stay here. Don't, don't go anywhere. There's more torture to come for you. But You know what? But this is what we do. We do. I mean, we literally think about this. It's not that easy as much as it seems like, I mean, what's one yeah, hand? Yeah. I don't know. It's as guys, we need to be okay with doing some work on this stuff. You know? It might take a little practice. It's okay. Or as he said, a lot. <laughs> go ahead. Good. So do, we, do I continue or go with the next one? You want to keep torturing this poor soul? <laughs> do, do you want to keep going? Do you no, want to try the arm? No, that was good. No, there was a lot of improvement there. Okay. Here, go, tra trade up with one of these guys right here. Who wants to go next? All right. Good stuff. So same thing. Both feet parallel, hip distance apart. Excellent. Feel your feet really rooted into the ground. Get the energy up to here. Good. Uh, automatically, the chest comes up. Lift it up just a little bit more. You seen the changes the take place as she's describing them? Yeah. Mm. Good. Relax. Relax here. No tension. Pull this back just a bit there. Do you see that this was too far forward? No, not a good thing. Good stuff. Be aware of these muscles here. There's another part to it besides the, the butt is as you really get comfortable with the butt, then you start being aware of your back muscles as you walk. And, uh, and then when a woman touches it, you'll actually contract them and, and she can feel that. It's a real nice thing. <laughs> okay. So uh, good. You're in good position. Ready? Go ahead. Take a step one step at a time. Nice and easy. 
You guys have swing in the arms. There's a problem. I never realized that. You got to go with an opposite. She's going to teach. Uh, she's going to create a website go. called Arm Swing and Secrets. <laughs> Arm swinging. <laughs> And okay, now there's an idea for you, buddy. There you go. Arm swing in secret. See if it's available quick. <laughs> Get on it. When you swing your arms, by the way, guys, don't let it come from the actual arm. That's when I, the arm starts from the shoulder blade. So when you are swinging your arm, it's actually swinging your back so that this happens. John Travolta was great at it. He would go like this. So if you think about your back, that'll naturally bring the opposite arm to come forward. So don't think about your arm, but think about your back. Okay, let's try it again. So I want you to think about your back. Think of, that's it. There, you got it. You go. That was good. Whoa. That was good. That was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that was awesome. Okay, do it again. Think about your back like you just did. That was really good. No, no, good, no, no, good. good. Stay, stay in back. there. Stay with it, man. Your, your back, your back. Don't think about your arms. Think about your back, your back, your back. There you go. At the end, he got it. Okay, your back. Feel your back move. You with me? Feel the back move with the leg. Oh, the yeah. earrings are coming off. The earrings are coming off. <laughs> okay. It's getting serious. Did you feel the difference? You learning something? By the way, give him a round of applause that too. That's great. Very good. You guys should be uh, taking these guys out and buying them drinks and dinner because they are feeling your pain. Okay, they're doing this for you. Okay, final guy. So step forward just a little bit more. Feet parallel, try not to open them up. Very st straighter, straighter, straighter. Okay, right here, tuck that in. Nice, see the chest already came up just from touching here. <laughs> Very good. Relax this, good. Be aware of your back muscles with every step you take and your cheeks will propel you forward. Okay, How right? should I think about my cheeks? Well, I mean, when you, if you take a step and you squeeze that muscle. Every step. Every step you take, yeah, ready? Now think about your back as you walk. Think about, there he goes. Oh, oh God, go. that back thing. Awesome. Calm down. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> like, that was it. That okay. was yeah, yeah, that was it. Do you see what she's talking about with the back? A little bit. And how it looks different? Will you, will you do, will you walk from here? Will Let's just uh, take these down here mm -hmm. for a sec. From here? Yeah. Will you walk from here forward and then and then turn around so they okay. can see your back muscles, so they can see what so you're talking about? So when I use, okay. Uh, so this is forward. When I use it, you could see there's an, an actual opposition that happens with the body. Zoop. <laughs> I feel like a model. Okay. Can you see the back muscles? Do it. Do it with uh, the arm swing. Now like I do with the arms and no back. Robotic. You see how it looks it? unnatural? Yeah. It looks contrived. Okay. Now shoulders again. Now I'm, now I'm the Ready one running the show. I like this. <laughs> there Good. you go. Okay. Now you see the difference? Could you see the difference in the guys? Yeah. Okay, good. Good. Very important. Good. All right. Thank you. Give these thank guys you. again a big round of applause. You know, it's funny because uh, when you said John Travolta, that's what I was thinking. I was thinking Saturday Night Fever. You know, women still swoon over him in that movie. Totally. And uh, I, I, I admit, several years ago, once I, I read that somewhere, I went and rented it and watched it and like just watched his body language. Do you remember when I read from Julius Fast's book, uh, Body Language? And I talked about uh, Mike, the sexual threat, and that he has an easy grace about him and that women kind of find it attractive, but men say he's greasy. Men don't like it for some reason. Okay. A lot of that is that kind of vibe that John Travolta has in that movie, the way he moves. And that shoulder thing, I'm going to go out and sing Staying Alive tonight. That's going to be awesome. Good. Um, what, is there another area we could uh, do a little work like that? You find that valuable? Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. It's good, huh? Um, another area. I mean, the other thing, we, we often do a lot of hip exercises to loosen up our hips as a general rule because especially men they're built more rigid and so when it comes to this area they tend to be stiffer so um i, I have that problem do you really yeah it's right there okay so there's certain exercises that maybe you want to do just to come on guys you, you <laughs> i laugh, totally missed that laugh. it went right over me <laughs> just kept going the courtesy laugh you know i haven't done it this time and i've got to do it at least once every program can i get some courtesy laughter please uh, 
<laughs> love that. <laughs> Always entertains the hell out of me. All right. Let's talk about the stiffness in the mid-range and again. Right. Uh, right. um, could, could we do some demonstrations? Absolutely. All right. You could all stand up, actually. Who, uh, who'd oh, like you to... Uh, demo again? Yeah, yeah, let's uh, <laughs> get some more victims. Uh, now, sit back down. <laughs> who wants to uh, do some work? You want to pick out some guys? Oh, me? Go ahead. I don't know. How about, uh, about this one right here? He looks ready. This one right here, Mr. Wellbeing. And uh, what do we think? What do you want from over on this side? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. That one? Sure. All right. So uh, please keep explaining okay. the, the concepts. The concept of loosening up the hips is we need to f a sensual man is like a well-oiled machine, just like a sensual woman. There's oil in the joints which means it's not stiff, it's not rusty, and we need to apply, uh, we need to learn how to use certain muscles in order to keep that flexibility in, in certain joints, if you will. Mm. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Okay, good, so why don't you all stand uh, next to me, with me just a little ahead, so you could all watch them, yeah, good. So there's different things that we teach in ballroom dancing, and one of them is, is what we call Cuban motion, and then learning how to roll the hips and how to isolate the hips, because often men, when we say move your hips, everything goes with it and that's not a good thing, <laughs> all right? So we need to learn how to isolate that. So the first thing you're gonna do as you stand with your feet hip distance apart, parallel, I want you to bend one knee, keep the other knee straight. Notice that the hip comes out and the shoulder should not move. Good, now switch. Good, and switch. And, and you can't go all right, easy. Well, with machine, nice and easy. Just bend one knee at a time, a little closer together, your, your, your feet. Yeah, good. Try to keep the shoulders quiet. Uh, don't move anywhere. Just bend one knee. Totally. Mm, thank you. <laughs> Stay there. Now bend the other knee. Excellent. There you go. Bend one knee completely and the other knee straight. Good. Excellent. That's what we call Cuban motion. So you notice they're loosening up the hips a little. That's good. Don't get the shoulders happening. Just like that. There you go. See the difference? As soon as you brought the shoulders in there, it starts to look a little stiffer. So you have to make sure it's just this. Good. So that's basic number one. So you guys, every day, if you want to loosen that up, you just, as you're doing the dishes, that's what I tell women. Men don't do dishes, so what do men do? <laughs> Brushing their teeth, shaving, <laughs> perhaps. You want to um, just bend one knee at a time and stretch the other one. Keep doing that. It's very important. Don't get this in there. Tuck your stomach in like we were doing. You're in that posture. Ah, there, there you go. That looked better. Good. And you have to make sure you maintain that posture. Excellent. Yeah, good. <laughs> that's one. You don't want to try this day? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> the next thing you want to do in the same position, we call it a hip roll. You're going to try tucking in your stomach, your pelvic forward. Keep the chest up, though. Remember, all this is isolation. As soon as this comes in, you look insecure. It's not happening. So stay there straight. Keep both legs straight for a second. Stay straight. Both legs straight. A little closer. There we go. Tuck this in. Bravo. Tuck. Tuck. Excellent. Now you're going to go to the right. Okay, without, without swinging it, I want you to keep this tucked and just roll just that hip. Don't move this. Good. Now go back. Feel like you're arching your back. Arch, arch, arch. Yeah. Arch back here. Arch. Keep the chest up. Now go to the left. Whoops. Stay straight. Just the hips. Just the hips. Swing them to the left. This way. Oh, no, no, no. Stay straight. Sorry. This way. The other way. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> okay, so stop. Put your hands on my hips. That's the next. This way. There you go. Did you get it? I can't see. Okay, good. Now go forward. Stay, stay. Go forward. Go side. Go back. Go side. Forward. Side. Back. Side. Women will volunteer their services if you ask. Okay. That's now good. freak. Oh, sorry. <laughs> And then as you, get <laughs> as you get comfortable with that, you want to be able to roll it. Now, we just did it step by step, but you want to be able to roll without moving the shoulders. Yeah. All make a circle. That's it. Make a circle. There you go. All, and you keep your knees flexible. That's it. Because often, I'll tell you something, when you're dancing with women and women get bounced around because the guys are there and then they're, oh, yeah, and they're doing this thing and it just doesn't work. And they're being bumped around, but if you could just kind of isolate when you're with her, big thumbs up. Yeah, that's it. Very good. 
And I, but I know it's good. This is an exercise to loosen up the hips, okay? That's what it's for. And then you do it in different directions. So then you go to the right and then to the left. Okay, guys. All right, everybody, stand up. It's an exercise, you know? <laughs> it's good. <laughs> it's awesome. All right, you guys. They're you, great sports. You guys, they can, really are. you guys can go sit back down. You don't have to do this part. Let's practice a little bit. What are we doing here? What are we doing? Let's get, get everybody to oh, do it. They're all going to try it? Everybody's got to feel, okay. feel what it feels like. Feel their pain. <laughs> okay, so we start with the cube in motion, the first part. So remember, keep the shoulders completely straight, feet fully on the ground. Bend one knee, keep the other knee completely straight. Do not move the shoulders. All right, so you can make fun of me because I wasn't doing them. Okay, so you were here. What are we doing here? Uh, feet square. Do I have to do that too, just no. like you did? Okay. <laughs> Bend one knee only. Which way are we going? Any knee. Pick a knee. Pick it. Okay. Good. Excellent. Ah. Now switch. Good, now switch. There you go, stretch the other Can knee. Can I put some uh, <laughs> a little swimming motion? There you go. So go ahead, guys. One knee, the other knee. And be aware that this does not move. It, it cannot. I mean, you really need to learn how to isolate certain body parts. That's it. So don't let the shoulders go. Good. Very nice. Isolate. Isolate. So have the shoulders not move. Yeah. I see a lot of people moving and bouncing. You don't yeah, want them to move. Them. No moving. Don't move up and down. <laughs> That's Will's it. over here getting funky. He's like, he's getting ready. Oh yeah. That's it. Okay. Good. And then there's the roll, which starts with a contraction forward. Contraction forward. And you might. Uh. That's oh, it. Oh, forward. And uh. you might feel the AP kick in, ass power. Oh, the ass power. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then you, <laughs> and then you go to, I like these abbreviation stuff. Yes. And then you go to the right, and kind of just swing it over. And you can keep both knees bent a little bit. Just kind of push them over. Now okay. here's the back one. Arch the back. Arch the back. And then to the left. Good, and then forward. Very good, Dave. You're not moving the shoulders. And then keep going around. You told me around. not to. Exactly. I watched how you brutalized those poor defenseless men. <laughs> there you go. I didn't want you to destroy me up here. Now, as you do that, roll. And then, and again, be very aware that this does not move. And don't swing. It's not about taking up a lot of territory. It's not like that. What's it called? Explore your space. It's not about exploring your space. <laughs> 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 uh, the cow, no, it's just about keeping it right at uh, that spot. Yeah, you feeling that? Good. What are some other areas, just quickly, that you know you could isolate? Just, just throw oh, out there. We'll just, okay. we'll just, we'll just try some. Go ahead. Um, if you look from the back here, if you just squeeze a shoulder blade down, you see what happens to my back. Yeah. Say yes. Okay, yeah. good. And then the other side. Yeah. So, guys, you, in order to start being aware of, you know, that walk we were talking about, you want to start just not the shoulders, but the actual back muscles, the traps and the here, being aware of that and squeezing that so that when you walk and you stand, you know, when you're standing at the bench and you're, you're doing that thing, like, you know, that the guys do, and you're there. <laughs> okay, I'm pretending you're the bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Down yeah. A little. Oh, okay. There we go. And, you know, even if you, if you slightly squeeze and this side, you get more of a curve in your body as compared to here. I'm not. I'm just straight. Now, look, if I do this. And a guy can afford to do that. I don't think it's about looking hmm. feminine. It's just about being aware of your whole chest comes forward when you do that as compared to just leaning. You just kind of, sorry, I keep doing that to you. <laughs> do, you do you understand the difference? Ow. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it look, you look a lot more powerful yeah. when you're muscles are flexed. What are other areas they could practice isolating? Okay. Isolating. Isolating. Any kind of muscle. When we dance, we're very aware of all muscles, the quads, all that. So when your leg is out, I mean, this is a pretty cool stance with one leg out. You guys do that a lot, I think, or you should. You know, be I, aware. I stand like that. I try to look cool like that all yeah, the time up here. You absolutely. notice? So here you're aware of both your back muscles. You're aware of your cheek, especially the, if you're leaning on the right and the left leg's out, then that one. Uh, very nice. And be aware of like, you know, if you have one hand here, that this muscle kicks in, anything, and then that this leg is solid. In dancing, if we hit a position, we just come out of five spins and we stop. If my muscles aren't completely in full tension, I will fall over in three inch heels. And guys do this also. So every step you take, every time you're standing there to look strong and grounded, you want your muscles to be at any muscle, your toes, your, your calf, your thighs, your butt, everything. Be aware of it. Mm. Not to be tense, but just be aware of them. And then someone will come over you and a girl will do the jump. <laughs> and she won't move you. And she's like, boy, he's like a rock. And that mm. is essential. That strength, that power. Mm. That's great. All right. Thank you. Thank You're you. Welcome. Give her a big round of applause. Thank you.
you're about to hear from uh, my friend Craig. I did an interview with Craig. Uh, you may have heard uh, several months back. He also um, was a co-presenter with me in my product, How to Meet Women in Bars and Clubs and Other Public Places. Um, you may have heard him or seen him in a, you know, one of many places. And uh, he's going to come up here and teach you about a lot of good specific techniques for body language. So give a warm welcome to my buddy, Craig. Hey guys, how's it going? All right. I'm going to need to uh, figure out how to use this thing again. Um, but before I do, you think we could uh, get the wave going real quick? Can we start over there? Come on, you guys are killing me. Let's go. <laughs> Woo! Thank you. All right, body language. I'm going to talk to you guys about using body language to create attraction, which is what it's all about. And when I was uh, first starting out getting this part of my life handled, this, uh, the concept of body language, the fact that it even existed and mattered with women was uh, brand new to me. And I went and, uh, you know, like I'm sure many of you guys have done, did uh, searches online for pickup lines and, uh, you know, tried to find out some great techniques. And, um, you know, when I uh, had friends that were successful with women, I'd ask them, oh, what'd you say to her? You know, what'd you do? What kind of, you know, trick did you use to get her phone number to get her to go on a, on a date with you? And then uh, I kind of accidentally discovered body language. I actually found that book, Body Language, by uh, Julius Fast that uh, David was referencing earlier. And that's when things started to come together for me because I realized that any uh, line or technique you do is uh, pretty much ineffective unless you have the congruency of the body language that goes along with it. And the best part about body language is it's one of those rare quick fixes that you can learn fast and it has a huge effect in your game. You know, unlike uh, inner game and, um, you know, getting over a fear of approaching women, those things can take a little bit longer to get used to. But body language is all about learning the motions and uh, postures and everything, and that's what we're going to talk about today. One of the things I noticed when I started uh, learning and practicing good body language is it actually uh, affects your uh, emotions. When you, uh, you know, stand with uh, good posture and you move in a powerful way, it'll actually uh, make you feel like a stronger person. That definitely projects when you're talking to women. They can actually start to feel it. And you'll notice something when you uh, meet guys who are very successful with women is that everybody has their own style of body language. You'll notice that, uh, you know, I don't move the same way as uh, David D. And, uh, you know, Mystery has got his own uh, style, kind of like a magician, you know. And I don't know if you guys have seen uh, Will walking around like, you know, powerful, man. I love it. <laughs> Everyone's got to ha have their own style, and you've got to find yours. So don't try to, uh, you know, mimic everything someone else does. Take little be bits and pieces from uh, everybody you see, all the uh, powerful figures that uh, you met over the weekend or, uh, you know, people you see on TV, movie stars. You know, just notice the little things and uh, bring them all together, and uh, soon you'll develop your own style, and that's when things will really start to happen for you. All right, one of my favorite things about body language is that you can use it to create an amazing presence that women notice. And I'm talking about when you uh, walk into a nightclub or uh, a restaurant, or even if you're just uh, sitting on a couch at a party, if you've got everything in line, you'll uh, seriously start to see you know, eyes going towards you because um, so many people don't know how to do this properly. And, like uh, myself so many years ago, don't even realize that body language is important when it comes to attracting women. So I'm going to take you guys through a little exercise that I use when I go out in the town that uh, gets me psyched up. So if everyone could uh, stand up, please. All right. Everybody close your eyes, please. Now, I want you guys to imagine that uh, this ballroom that we're in and the uh, hotel and casino has just become your hotel and casino. You're now the owner of this place, president and CEO. Would you still be standing the same way you are now? I don't know about you guys, but I'd probably, you know, be uh, postured a little bit more confident, maybe, you know, to the point of arrogance, just knowing this is my place, I make the rules, and 
you got to talk to me if you uh, want something done. So imagine that. Imagine walking around this place as the owner and president. Imagine how people treat you. Imagine how women look at you as you're uh, strolling by the slot machines or around the bar with that powerful creative presence. Can you guys start to feel that? Can you feel your body language changing a little bit? It can be a really powerful effect. When you uh, own a place, I mean, who can resist wanting to get to know you, wanting to please you? What woman can resist attracting the owner? And uh, I encourage you guys to do that. Every time you walk into a place, uh, a new place, you know, or uh, maybe if you find yourself in a situation with women and you're starting to, uh, you know, get a little nervous for whatever reason, just uh, think about whose house it is. My house. That's what it's all about. All right, now let's talk about body language mistakes that send women running. And they really do. I found that it's just as important to eliminate bad body language as it is to develop good body language because it really does all come down to congruence. When you uh, start to eliminate the uh, tics and uh, nervous body language that you've been using and you start to incorporate the good stuff, you know, it's, it's a slow process, but one day you're going to have it all lined up and then you're going to be totally congruent. And that's when you're really going to start to see things change. So I want to talk to you guys about some of those nervous tics and mistakes that uh, guys make that I used to make myself. Heck, some of them I still catch myself uh, making every once in a while but it's important to recognize that they do exist and get rid of them as fast as you can. And number one is leaning in. You've heard Mystery mention it. You've heard David D. mention it. There's a reason why we keep mentioning this. It's, I believe, the single biggest mistake guys make with women. And I knew that I wasn't going to be the first or the only guy to mention this, but I kept it in my presentation anyway. And the reason why is this. Even when I realized that uh, I was making the mistake of leaning in when I talked with women, it's uh, one of those things that's a little bit uh, harder to correct than some of the others because it really is you know, built up inside of you from all those years of doing it. And uh, Another thing is uh, stiffness. I see a lot of guys when I'm out at the clubs or bars, restaurants, that are just really stiff and they don't look comfortable in their own skin. And that's one of the big things that women notice. They want to know that a guy is comfortable in their own skin. So think about that. Another thing is a weak handshake. I still can't believe how many people have weak handshakes. I'll go to a uh, marketing seminar, and I'll meet a guy who's, you know, making a couple million dollars a year, and I'll go to shake his hand, and it's just repelling, you know, when a guy uh, doesn't have a firm grip. And yes, you should be a little bit more gentle when shaking a woman's hand, but, uh, you know, you still got to show her who the man is to a point and, uh, you know, let her know that the power is there. Another thing is uh, cracking your knuckles. I make this mistake myself, still do. It's a hard one to break. I'm working on it. I encourage you guys to uh, work on that one as well, or don't start in the first place. That is not only bad when uh, women see you doing it, but the noise actually calls attention to it, so no good. Also, moving your mouth, licking your lips. This is a really bad one, and um, a lot of people develop this habit when they uh, get braces or retainers, and they'll start playing with it, or, you know, guys who have their tongues pierced, and they'll just be, uh, you know, moving their mouth in a weird way when they're standing around. And women see you doing that, and they, you know, wonder what the hell's going on there. It's not good. Not attractive. Don't do it. All right, another big one is misuse of eye contact. I meet a lot of guys who use too much eye contact, and a lot of people who use too little. Too much really creeps people out, men and women, and too little makes them uh, you know, think you're submissive. And the most important thing with that is to be conscious of it. And I have a great book recommendation. It's a must read for anyone who's serious about getting this uh, handled. It's got a ton of great eye contact tricks and uh, body language secrets and everything else. And it's called Talking the Winner's Way. And it's by Leal Lowndes. That's L-O-W-N-D-E-S. Fantastic book. Check it out. It's got some great sections on eye contact that will clear that out for you. And something my uh, friend Chance pointed out to me that I didn't even realize, another biggie, is a lot of guys will go out and um, instead of, uh, you know, leading the way and uh, doing their own thing, they'll kind of look to other guys to figure out what to do or how to act. And women really pick up on this stuff. They uh, 
will see that you have a lack of leadership skills and uh, aren't securing your own skin once again if you're uh, you know constantly looking around trying to see how other people are acting and um, think about that at this seminar when uh, you know you see someone uh, standing up to uh, give an ovation or uh, you know being the first one to clap notice whether you're the first one to clap or the last one don't be the uh, afraid to uh, be the first one to start clapping or uh, you know, the first one to stand up to give an ovation. Those are just a couple of examples I could think of. Like, um, if you guys wanted to give me a premature round of applause right now. Thank you. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Don't be afraid to take initiative in all parts of your life. Women notice that stuff. It's huge. Another thing I see every night at the bars and clubs is uh, wallflowers. Guys who sit there on the dance floor with their drink, just uh, kind of sitting around just waiting for something to happen nothing's going to happen and even if you uh, should decide to make something happen at that point well the women in there have already seen you sitting there like this geeking out and um, they're going to remember that so don't do it my friend mystery taught me something many years ago that i've never forgotten i use every night when uh, you have a drink in your hand don't hold it right here like everybody else does put it down at your side and put your uh, chest up observe the uh, whole club fantastic tip thank you all right, now let's talk about body language that forces women to notice you. The opposite of uh, looking around for cues is uh, just laughing and having a great time no matter who you're with. I see a lot of guys make the mistake. Uh, you know, a couple guys will go out to meet some girls, and they'll just sit there together and just kind of scan the club. Women find it much more attractive, even if you're just out with one of your buddies, if you're just, you know, having a conversation, not paying attention to what's going on. Uh, in fact, I've, I've never gotten approached by a woman when I'm standing there with my buddy just, you know, geeking out. But I've had it happen dozens of times when, uh, you know, me and my friends will be laughing about something, going crazy, you know, telling jokes, having a good time. And, uh, you know, a waitress will come over or uh, some random woman will be like, you know, what's so funny? What are you guys laughing at? Were you guys laughing at me? You know, it's really addictive. So, uh. Relax, have a good time, even when you're out uh, with a mission to meet girls. Even if you uh, meet some people in here and go out tonight, you know, obviously you want to focus on uh, meeting women and uh, developing those skills, but, uh, you know, when uh, you're hanging out, get to know who you're with and uh, just enjoy your company.